We want to be able to encourage people through aroha and manaki, and it starts with a fee. Kia ora, uh, ko Lionel Hotene tōku ingoa. My name is Lionel, born and bred in South Auckland. Love our community, love our marae. Um, Nanny Mere was our matriarch, and she was instrumental in, in um, addressing some of the food insecurities that we have here in Mangere. So um, we're, we're happy to carry on with those uh, traditions and aspire to what she was um, trying to do for the community. We have this uh, beautiful project called Kaika, and uh, we've been doing that now for about three, four years. The Kaika project started about three years ago. There was an organisation called the Outboard Boating Club down on Tamaki Drive, and what they produced was a lot of fish heads and frames. We also knew that Papatuanuku Kōkiri Marae produced 80,000 kumara a year and what they did with that kumara was they shared it with the community. We joined together in a partnership, Outboard Boating Club, Papatuanuku and Legacy. Primarily Legacy is an environmental organisation. We're focused on restoring our marine environment and we want an abundance for future generations. Now what this Kaika project is all about maximum utilisation. It's about waste not, want not. If you utilise these natural resources effectively then there's going to be less demand on our fisheries and there's also going to be an ability to, to feed more of the community. What's really exciting for me is uh, people like the Kaika project that are looking at uh, completely new waste streams um, that a lot of people didn't even consider to be a waste stream before and they're then connecting that up with uh, particularly vulnerable people but also getting culturally appropriate food uh, to those people so what they're doing with the fish heads and frames is in my opinion like the holy grail um, this is stuff that was not even thought of as waste before and now all of a sudden it's in, in, in families in South Auckland some of these Polynesian families this is the richest most uh, revered food in their culture um, so they're taking this waste product and they're getting it straight into these families so I think it's pretty pretty outstanding really. It was motivating having the the partners kind of wrap around us um, having organisations that have been there for a long time like Bobby Stafford Bush Foundation, uh, the OBC but then having organisations like Foundation North step up, um, Campbell Plumbing and KR Electric who came in and plumbed in the the, the, the container you know, gave us electric so that we had the capacity to spool up because we couldn't take more fish without working fridges. Um, it was, that gave the rest of the team the motivation. We knew we had to get cracking. We, we knew that there was work to be done, but having everybody else come around alongside us, that, that's what really helped keep the whole process moving. In light of what's happened with the pandemic and COVID-19, you know, really important for us to keep the momentum around feeding our people and we've been just overwhelmed with a lot of good people that have come on board and help us to move it forward. Royal Wolf stepped up and donated this container to us so that we had a, a suitable facility to process these fish. Kaika approached Royal Wolf. Uh, we met with them, discussed the options that were available and came up with a solution that was specific for them and the project. We provided a shipping container that's a 20 foot open cider it's an option for them to have a filleting station, but not only that, also a distribution centre to give back out to the community. Over the, the COVID period with Level 4 lockdown, we had queues 400 metres long outside um, the Marae of everybody waiting to pick up fish. So we were, in many regards, quite lucky that we'd actually had the time to develop and prepare. So when, when we did find ourselves in the middle of this, um, this global pandemic, as everything started to close down, the demand ramped up. So at a time when we needed it the most, we didn't have access to fish. And that's when Moana stepped up. Moana New Zealand came aboard and they just filled that void. And, and they've been remarkable as partners. They just immediately got it. They understand the need to, to feed the community. And within a few days, we were picking up 500 kilos a day from them. It's been incredible. Hey, just here to pick up some. Um, oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, local, it's an we're about to pick up, uh, you know, 500 kgs um, of snapper frames and heads, and the condition is just mint. Um, they probably just cut it this morning. Um, and yeah, the quantity and the quality is top notch. Speaking. You know, especially in these hard times, even if it wasn't a hard times, it, you know, it's uh, there's a lot of people out there in need, but especially now, uh, Moana uh, Fisheries is, is more than happy to, to participate in this. We're really um, happy that we uh, 
got a chance to contribute to it. So I think what um, the pandemic's done is it's, it's highlighted the fact that um, there is food insecurity in this country. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the media about um, you know, food parcels, people trying to access food parcels, food banks. Um, I know here at the Marae, uh, the line is longer than it's ever been before. So we had um, a young person come in and then he was coming in to get, because um, he saw the post on Facebook and he came in to get some food for his, for his grandfather. And uh, he came back and got some frames for himself because um, his grandfather cooked up a real good kai and it was awesome to see that young people are connecting to a food source that they probably wouldn't wouldn't eat because you know they're so keen on McDonald's and stuff like that. So that was a real turning point, I suppose, uh, that intergenerational connection that we're having with in our community around the elders, Komato Kuya, connecting with their mukapuna and sharing a food. We just want to make it sustainable, and I think one of the ways we can make it sustainable is to share it around, share the cope up around to other marae. And we hope to be like a, like an example for other marae. This particular kai, it's just something else about it with our elders. We um, not only is it the ultimate in comfort food, it's cultural food, it's food for the soul. And uh, it's not just the luxury of this particular food, but it's a little, it's that opportunity to interact and, and touch bases with our co-master. It's nice to go in and say hi, but it's a million times better to go in and go hi with a fishy. You know, I remember some stories about our ancestors on two massive waka, deep fishing and using nets and fully laden with 50 warriors pulling up this net and a sense of abundance there and we want to go back to that and be familiar with kaimoana and what's in the sea. And Hopefully we can learn some lessons here um, and what I think is really amazing is that New Zealand now is opening its eyes to this insecurity problem. Um, I think a lot of the people that were food insecure are now more comfortable than they ever were to access a food parcel, to come down to the marae, to ask for some fish heads, to ask for help. Um, so hopefully this isn't just a short term thing, just a one time thing. Uh, we can learn from this, um, we can be more compassionate, we can help people that are suffering food insecurity and also we can look at our food systems, our exports, how we act as a massive producer of incredible quality food and start to divert that back into where it's most important which is right here at home. Achieving the this essential service status um, was quite an eye-opener for me personally. I knew that it was an important role within the community but that was what cemented the reality that um, we all need to just be thinking about fundamentals and that's shelter and good food. Um, there's not a lot more that matters in life as long as you've got a full stomach then everything else is a little bit easier. That's what the pandemic has done. It's given people opportunities to start to think about what they value. And food is at the forefront in this community. It's Tato Tato. And we're all in this together. And we're not going anywhere. Yeah.